Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So before we proceed with this episode, what I would like to tell you is that if you have not seen the system design introduction video, wherein we have discussed about the architecture of this mini project that we are building, I would highly recommend you to check the same. I will leave a link to the description as well so that you can click, check the same and then get back onto the video. Previously, we have seen a lot of details about Cassandra, Kubernetes. We have covered them with a lot of details and prior to that, we have done the similar kind of setup for Redis as well as uh, MySQL. We have touched upon a lot of technologies. We have made our URL service quite ready. And now we should focus a little on our worker wherein we have our HTML worker and the image worker and the PDF worker. And uh, we are going to enrich them and we are going to use mongo to store the details about the documents and things like that so i am here at the docker hub page for mongodb it's the official image and we are going to go ahead and pull this image so previously what happened during the cassandra setup is i lost all my images uh, there was uh, too many containers that i have started it crashed and could not recover so <laughs> bad luck with that so we are going to go ahead and pull the image for mongo and as you know that it's going to go ahead and pull the latest by default and in this documentation page you will find all the details for mongo it's documented in a very nice way you'll you'll find everything how to start a mongo server instance how to connect to another docker container your docker compose and every details of it we are going to use the latest version over here and uh, as we go forward what i'll do is we'll uh, see the theories not at once but slowly as we progress down the line so here we have the images uh, now so you can see that we have mongo uh, before we start with mongo i will like to introduce uh, the mongo database in few lines so mongo is a uh, document oriented database so it's not like the traditional database where we have rows and columns but here we store it as a document so when I say document, you can visualize it uh, like uh, a JSON file or JSON uh, string, something like that. So it is a high performance, high available and very easily scalable. So uh, in a traditional database, we have a um, database concept. In Mongo also, we have the same thing. We call it database. In um, traditional RDBMS, we have table and here we call it collection since we are collecting the documents. Once we create a table, the tables will have tuples or row whatever you call it but here we don't create a table so we don't have tuple and uh, rows we have documents right so we have the collection then we have the documents and for every row in our rdbms you have columns right and since we don't have a tuple or a row we have a document instead so we have fields so document will have fields right and then um, you have the joins in uh, in mysql table or in oracle database but here what we do is we embed document so a json can contain another json and uh, for primary key and all we still have the primary key so it's a default key called underscore id which is generated by mongo and uh, it is uh, managed by itself so over to creating the container so what we'll do is we'll quickly go ahead and spin up a container over here and uh, creating the container is again very straightforward so we'll use the same command as we used to do so docker run and followed by a name then uh, i want to do it in a detached mode and i want to do a port mapping since i will be connecting it from my uh, spring boot application so i need to provide a port mapping over here so the default port is 27017 and we are going to map the same port over here so and then we need to give the name of the image so once you give that you will get an id that means your container has been started so let's just verify we have given the name mongo so as you see over here that uh, you have all the logs and if you do a docker ps you will see that it's running and it, it, the binding has been done right so we'll go ahead and create some collection uh, from the code and we'll try to understand how it helps okay so we have it ready and uh, what i have done for you is i have changed our html worker so i'll quickly walk you through what i have done so this worker used to consume the messages from uh, your kafka topic right and to test it locally what i have done is i have added the dependency for spring boot starter web and what we have done over here is i have created a resource which will just uh, take the uh, string url and it will pass it onto the same service as we used to do and previously we used to pass it to the same service from our worker that we have created 
so that this was our kafka listener who is to pass it to the same process and what we are doing over here i have commented posting it back to our url uh, feeder service because we are just testing the scope of this application so from this url uh, we are uh, extracting some informations out and uh, these are the information so id is something that is generated by us then we have the url id so along with this what i'll also do is i'll uh, store the url for which this content is then I have the title, then I have keyword, description, the body and the created time. So what this basically means is uh, let's uh, go over to one of the website and uh, try to understand it. So let me go over to Amazon.in and uh, what I'll do quickly is I will take you to the view page source. And over here you can see that this is the HTML file over here. And we have some important information that will be required during searching. So uh, that's what I have done. So I'll just give a quick walkthrough of what I have done. So the first thing that I have done is I have extracted the title. So you can see over here, this is a title tag and which contains the title of it. So we have, so you can see over here in the title field, I am putting the docs title and then I have the description. So the description is nothing but, um, the content from your meta tag with the name description so again you can see over here this there is a meta tag with the name description so i have got this and uh, we have a meta tag with the name keywords and i have used the same and what i have done is i have split it up so each one each one of this comma is one keyword for us right so i have just uh, split it into a collection so i am returning a list and um, the other thing that i have done is uh, your body so body is uh, nothing but your um, uh, content over here so i'm going to get the entire body of this uh, page as a text stripping all the html tags right so we have the body tag over here if you know right i have got all the content of it and i have just removed all this so i am getting the text that is visually present over there right and we are uh, going to persist this into our uh, mongo database that setup i haven't done i thought of getting it done together so before that i will do a few things over here i will just um, generate few of the things so one thing is the random uuid that i have just added over here so id is a string field as you see so url id is something that i won't have it now right it will be passed from kafka so i can't do much about it so what i'll do for url id is to put a uuid for the time being sorry it would be set and uh, the other thing is the page info dot um, set url so we are going to set the url that we have received and we are going to persist this information in our mongo database we're going to first test the application that we are getting the right information or not so what we'll do is we'll quickly start the application and i am logging it over here so we should be able to see it or rather what i'll do is i'll put a breakpoint over here so that we can see it so i will start this application over here in a debug mode and in the meantime it comes up what i'll do is i'll go to postman so once again all this code is available in your github so you can go ahead and check anytime you want and the link will be in the description section below so please go ahead and check so let's go over to the body so what i'm sending is uh, amazon.in and uh, let's send it should hit our breakpoint so okay our breakpoint is hit now let's see what we have in the page info object right so in the page info object we have a id we have the url id we have the url stored so this is the title coming from the website title we have 27 keywords you can see all of them is present in our uh, keywords tag then we have the description then we have the body the body would be something pretty big and then we have the creator time so everything is present inside this body you can see it's a very big tag whatever is present there right so if you do a view you will see that this content is pretty big and that's the primary reason why i have selected mongo because we are going to store it as a document rather than as a row and column right so okay so let's go ahead and do the configuration for the same so we are going to go ahead and add the dependency for spring boot 
data data mongo into our application i have it handy if you want it you can just go ahead google it and uh, get it from any of the site right and uh, so what we'll do is we'll add the dependency over here and um, the next thing is you should go ahead and resolve the dependencies so that you can use the classes and uh, don't end up with any errors well this has been resolved so let's go ahead so first thing is that we need to store this as a document right so we need to put an annotation over here called document which should be your mongo's mapping right so we are going to put this over here so we should uh, go ahead and uh, first enable the repositories over here so over here we are going to go ahead and put enable mongo repositories so we are using a mongo repository so we'll go ahead and uh, enable it otherwise the configuration won't um, take into effect in the, as a base package so we'll need some do classes and all so we'll go ahead and create those package as well so let's first create it and um, let's have a do and um, So we'll put a base package over here and we are going to put form dot joy of light dot html file worker dot do so we are just uh, telling a string over here that all my do's are over here okay so we are good over here so next uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, create a class inside our do so let's call it page repositories and what we are going to do is this is not going to be a class this is the interface actually and we are going to extend um, mongo repositories over here right and uh, what we are going to store basically over here is our page info object which is our object and our primary key is a string so we are going to provide them over here so basically we are not going to do anything we are just going to use this um, repository over here and we are going to persist the data or no nothing else but right we are not querying even we can do a basic query with the id that should be fine it shouldn't have any pr uh, problem so what i'll do over here once we do a logging what uh, first let's auto wear it so we are going to auto wear mongo page repository and let's call it page repository and uh, let's make it private uh, let's do a page repository dot save and we are going to save the page info object right <clears throat> so our do is ready we are good we uh, got the things that we are looking for and the next thing that we are going to do is we have to provide the connection parameters for our application dot property so that we are able to connect to uh, mongo so it's uh, going to be pretty straightforward what we do is we use the traditional way so spring data mongodb right mongodb and then we need to provide the host and uh, we need to provide the port so in the post we'll do a 127.0.0.1 and for port what we did was we have given 27017 so we'll use the same port so we are done with the host and the port right since i am using the default username and password i didn't need to give that and the next thing that we'll need is a database so we'll go ahead and provide the same spring data again mongodb and then the database and page info so let this be our database and what we'll do is we'll provide a collection now this document that we have created over here it should go and sit into a collection right so this uh, collection would be at this level that this objects are going to go ahead and sit into a collection so this document if you see over here you will have a collection right and the default collection is an empty collection so what we are going to do is we are going to provide it with a collection and uh, the name of the collection is um, html page right so we have the collection called html page and uh, we have given the name as html page info so let's change this so we'll have a web collection so under web collection itself we are going to create this html page collection over here my bad yeah over here html page collection right only thing that we'll do over here is to put the id 
and uh, we'll change the name for few of the fields so you can just do a put a field and then put a mapping to it so we are going to store it with the name of url id and uh, the other fields uh, uh, looks fine to me and we are going to change the field and put a name over here and we will uh, store it as created underscore time so these are the two fields that we are going to go ahead and change the name the other fields will use the same name as present over here so now what we are going to do is we are going to run this application so let's start this application and try to uh, put some records and see if it is working as expected or not so the application is coming up fine i can see there are no errors uh, some kafka issue you might get but uh, anyways we are not uh, listening to it so we are good so i'm going to go ahead and put amazon dot in over here so let me send the request and uh, what i can see over here is that the connection has been opened and we also received a 201 okay that means uh, this looks good and uh, let's put for a couple of more of them so let's try for stackoverflow.com so stack overflow is also 200 okay so we should have a couple of documents now inside our um, uh, mongo collection right so let's try with flipkart and we'll see if we are getting all those data properly or not with uh, mintra as well we're targeting all the shopping websites over here so we got a 200 okay in so let's try with youtube.com so we have ingested uh, quite a few records over here so what we'll do quickly is we'll come to our command prompt and we are going to do a docker exec it and then we are talking with the mongo and we need to get into the bash so inside the bash uh, we'll just go to the mongo prompt and you can see that you have been welcomed and you are inside the mongo so if you see the db we are inside the test db over here and uh, let's do a show dbs and uh, you can see that our database is web collection so you can just say use web underscore collection so our data should be here so it has switched to web collection so first let's do a show collections and we have html page so we can do a db.html underscore page dot find and it should return us everything right we have all the records over here but this is pretty unreadable so let's go ahead and do a find but we'll do a pretty find so it should make it look pretty right so we have three objects over here you can see that we have all the contents pulled in for all the sites over here so to start with we started with amazon.com or notco.in so amazon.in these are the keywords this is the description this is the body the entire content is here and then we have a uh, flip cart once again lesson number of keywords lot of content tv bikes jackets whatnot right so we are going to go ahead and search on these keywords and things like that once we have elastic search in place so right you got the idea how things uh, are processed over here right we have a very small body about um, youtube not much thing we got because mostly the things are loaded on the runtime and uh, we have pretty big bodies for the others right so we are going to understand them in a lot more details down the line so what i have done over here is we have uh, created our uh, mongodb basic thing so you can see over here that we have all the documents stored in a proper format and uh, things like that so i'll uh, restrict the video till here in the videos to come what we'll do is we'll deep dive into more of mongo we'll try to understand in a lot more details and we'll capture a um, and we'll uh, and we'll see how we can uh, bring in elastic search as well into picture and get things done so for um, so that's all from this tutorial i hope you got the basic understanding of how to use mongo all this code will be available in the github uh, link shared on the description section please go ahead and check it out if you have any doubts please feel free to reach out to me and uh, yeah that's all bye bye and take care see you soon